thanks everybody for joining me uh, today. Um, I'll have to apologize ahead of time. I have a cold, so I'll probably start coughing at some point, but I'll, hopefully we can get through in about the next 30 minutes or so and uh, go through some of the material and I can introduce you to some of this new uh, uh, workflow in uh, DNA Star software. So, so cloud assemblies uh, for NGS sequences. Uh, this is uh, something that we've had uh, in some form for a couple of years. We've, we've recently made some updates to make uh, use of the cloud uh, much more user-friendly. We provided some demo data for folks to use there. And you know, one of the trends that we've seen, just like Sharon mentioned, is that you know, people are moving away from desktop computers more and more and, and use laptops or tablets and, and really lower powered computers than, than they may have even a couple of years ago. And so uh, directing assemblies up to the cloud really starts to make a lot more sense. Um, and so, so we'll go through some of the pros, you know, some of the pros and cons of, of doing uh, assemblies up in the cloud. Uh, and then I'll show you in a live demo, you know, how, how we actually do that. So, so DNA Star software, just a little bit of background. Of course, we have a software for molecular biology, um, structural biology, protein analysis, and uh, genomics. And so we're really going to be focused in the genomic suite um, and talking about a couple of the different workflows that we do with our genomic software. So the different workflows are, are wide ranging. Uh, we, we have our own algorithms for doing de novo assemblies, uh, alignments to reference genomes, uh, transcriptomic assemblies, and we have a number of webinars that cover these specific topics. And typically the webinar will start with the project setup. So we'll, we'll uh, launch Seekman Engine and it'll guide you through the setup of these different uh, workflows uh, and then run the assembly and then there's a variety of different uh, analysis options. And so that flow then is really uh, in our software, which is different from some, some others, but it's you take your data, so it's typically um, Illumina or Ion Torrent FastQ input data and that goes into the assembly algorithm and that produces a variety of different output files depending on uh, on your workflow. And then we go into our analysis program. So again, if you're primarily interested in one of these different workflows, uh, we have you know webinars or short videos on each one that will that will guide you through. Uh, today's webinar is really focused on you know how can I do this flow you know when I don't have the computing uh, resources available to me. So uh, so the analysis um, you know, will be done locally. So the analysis doesn't take the hardware. Um, that you might need for aligning, you know, millions or billions of reads to a reference genome. We're doing a large uh, de novo assembly, so uh, the analysis needs are much lower than that. Actually, the actual assembly needs, and of course, the analysis is all, all different things. We have a, a genome browser that you can look at data tracks. We can combine Sanger trace data with NGS data in validations. Um, we have uh, the capability to compare large sets of data, so you may have RNA-seq expression across multiple samples with replicates, so really a nice visualization and analysis. And again, we're not going to focus here today, we're really going to focus a little bit upstream, and that is the assembly part. And what we found is that, you know, the, the flow really is data, set up a local assembly, so, so we'll have software on our local computer that points to these files, and then we run that locally and uh, do the analysis. And that's how we, most folks to this, uh, to this point have done their assemblies. What we found though is that the most common problem that people encounter is that they simply don't have the hardware um, to run you know, anything above you know, some of the smaller assemblies. So if you're aligning to a human genome, even if it's an exome or RNA-seq, you need enough hard disk space to you know, handle some temporary files that are generated. And, and, and like I mentioned earlier, you know, most people are using laptops, and, and even you know, powerful laptops just simply don't have the the hardware uh, required to run moderate sized data sets. And so we offer an alternative, and that's uh, set the assembly up locally, but then direct the data to the cloud. And so we can actually run the assembly up on powerful computers, and then download them uh, for for analysis. And of course, the key to all this working is those where I have the arrows going to the Amazon cloud, that, that has to work well. It has to be robust, a fast, secure transfer. And that's something that we've worked on recently to improve. It's our, we call it our cloud data drive. Really, really fast 
and secure transfer. So we can, um, you know, even with the upload and download times, when you factor that in with the assembly, we can still get great performance. And so uh, we're going to look at a workflow today that's actually, uh, uh, you know, out in the future, towards the end of this year, early 2020, we're going to have have an even more seamless uh, transition to doing cloud assembly. So we'll look at today how we set that up, and then uh, and then not too distant future, we'll have even a more seamless uh, workflow for going going to the cloud. And so we have a couple options now: run it locally, run it up on the cloud. So so the question is, you know, why assemble on the cloud? And uh, you know, there's a number of, of of reasons. One of them is that the hardware on the cloud is is really excellent, and this is really what what breathes some new life into this. When we first did cloud assemblies, you know, five years ago, you know, it was pretty expensive. The hardware wasn't that great, um, so you didn't really get great performance for what you were paying for. And so it was a really a, a big barrier for people. Said, well, I can just you know at that price, I'll just set up my own local workstation. Well, the hardware that we have now, and this is so so. I know it uses some little bit different terminology, but uh, ECUs um, and 16 virtual CPUs. So these computers, um, I'm not, I can't actually explain what an ECU is other than it's Amazon's way to approximate uh, cores on the cloud. So kind of think of this like a 53 you know, core computer. So it's a, it's a big computer, lots of these virtual cores. The speed isn't that that great, but it's using these Intel Broadware, Broadwell uh, processors. So you know, it's it's really uh, high grade software or hardware, and we have quite a bit of RAM, 122 gigs of RAM, and lots of disk space. And the disks aren't the normal uh, SSDs; they're they're these new NVMe drives. Um, and again, this is it stands for Non Volatile Memory Express. And these are these drives plug into a PCI slot, and they're five to ten times faster than an SSD drive. So the, they're they're extremely fast drives. So so this hardware is great, and it produces really fast assembly times. And so I just have a, a little benchmark here of um, a local computer. So what, what we did to try to make some uh, comparisons is we built one of my computers is as similar to this cloud computer as, as we could make it. You know, so you can't exactly uh, uh, mimic the virtual computers, um, but we came pretty close. It's got the NM, uh, NVMe drives in it, uh, lots of cores. The same amount of memory, 120 or so, and so so we can compare them roughly apples to apples, not exact, but uh, the data set is 11 human RNA seeks, so it's about 69 gigabases of data, so a pretty hefty RNA seq data set, and you can see that even on my really fast desktop, um, it takes about 18 and a half hours to assemble all the data sets, and so the average per assembly time is 1.7 hours. I can take the same data on the cloud and it's only about 11 hours so it shaves off seven hours of time now i have had that asterisk there that actually includes uploading all the data running the assembly and downloading all the data and so that is included in that what we say total assembly time which is the kind of the user experience so that's averaging about 55 minutes per per sample and so what we see in the cloud is uh, when you have multiple samples in particular you get a, a big benefit because you can run multiple concurrent assemblies. So the way it works is the job gets sent up, um, virtual machines will get spun up, so you'll have each one of these RNA-seqs running on 11 different computers. Um, when they finish up, then there's a cross-comparison. So we have another algorithm that goes and finds those computers, those 11, and does a cross-comparison. So, for example, if we're doing a variant analysis, um, you want to know if there's a variant in one sample, what happened in the other the other samples at that same position. So we do cross-checking across samples. So that's all part of this, what, what I call assembly time. It's really a big chunk of it is actually cross-comparison time as well. So so at the end, all these cloud computers run the job. It gets coalesced together into a project and into a single array star project so you can start to do your comparison. So it's really, really nice performance. Um, and also... Some jobs you just simply can't do, you know, on a local computer. RNA seeks can be challenging um, if they're extremely deep, and you're trying to do SNP analysis as well. You need a, a pretty beefy computer, you know, with some RAM and disk space, uh, to, you know, to get through some of these bigger RNA seq data sets. And there's things like de novo transcriptome. De novo transcriptome 
you know, if you run that on open source, it has to be run on a Linux cluster. Our software can run on these computers and do de novo transcriptome at really, really nice performance, assembling thousands of transcripts. Um, so, so again, we have other benchmarks that if you have questions on on uh, how it performs and other workflows, there's we have some more data for that as well. Um, now, of course, really small data sets, there actually isn't, the, the, with the upload and download time, not much of a benefit. So time-wise, not much of a benefit. So it really benefits multiple sample, bigger projects, or if you really don't have hardware in place. Um, the third point for assembling in the cloud is it's cheap. And that's really what, you know, we got the hardware improved dramatically, the cost dropped dramatically as well. And so right now we offer free demo assemblies. So anyone that requests a demo of our genomic suite, they get five free assemblies. Uh, we just absorb the cost. It's low enough. We don't, it doesn't matter to us so much. Uh, and really the cost of most assemblies is well under a dollar. You know, in many cases it's just pennies. Um, and so customers that want to use the cloud, you know, we, we don't really have a set cloud price. We kind of figure out what kind of jobs are you doing. We get a, a rough estimate and then we, we price it that way. So, um, but again, it's, it's cheap, certainly a lot cheaper than buying this local computer that I had. That was probably a couple of grand to set the whole thing up. Um, and, and a little tricky IT time to get the NMV, NVMe drives working properly. Those are kind of cutting edge. So that took a little time. So, so really, um, it makes us much more appealing. So the, the demo today uh, is gonna be a couple of steps in it. So I just like to kind of lay out what we're gonna do in the live software. Um, we're gonna launch the Seekman engine wizard. So that's where all the assemblies, whether they're local or cloud, they, they start there. Um, I'm gonna show you how we upload data via our cloud data drive. Um, and then we're gonna set up a couple of different cloud assemblies, either with the, the uploaded data or data that's already on the cloud, cloud demo data. And then I'll show you uh, how, we, how we download and what, what files you'll, you'll want to download. So with that, I'll jump out of the PowerPoint and close that folder. So we're just gonna launch Seekman Engine. I'll take a drink of water while that's going on. Not coughing yet, that's good. And so this is Seekman Engine. Um, and it, it uh, you can see our advertisement here, try cloud assemblies for free. Again, a great way, um, you know, to try things out. It doesn't cost you anything. And you'll see just how convenient it is. But we have a couple options here. We can assemble locally or we can assemble up on the cloud. And we'll just click that button. And what it's doing now is it's checking to see, you know, am I uh, allowed to run on the cloud? So it's checking a, a license right now. And I just restarted the computer, so I think it's, well, that's strange. So it, has, it goes and it finds my, my testing account, mj at lx.com, and then you type your password in. This would all be sent to you. And if you try a demo out, you'll get an email that'll have this information in it, and you can save the password, and, and it will recognize that you've got cloud assemblies to run. So. So I go to the cloud assembly and the, you know, I can do a new cloud assembly. I can go and look at uh, monitor existing cloud projects or I can upload data. So if you're trying to demo out and you wanna have your own data, we click that button. At the very bottom, I can see I've got 286 assemblies left up on this cloud. And again, the sales reps can add more assemblies as needed. Um, so I upload the data. So let's just click this button, pretend that now we're gonna upload some data. And this actually opens up uh, the cloud data drive. And, and this has been, we've had this for a while. Uh, it's been, uh, it's a, just a simple uh, file transfer. And we've made it look a little nicer and it works a little more user friendly. Um, and so if I click this home folder, here's my folder. And you can see I've got lots of folders there with demo data sets that I use. And I find it extremely convenient because uh, I can access this from any computer. So right now I'm on a bigger workstation. Um, usually I work from my laptop. So no matter where I am, if I'm at home or at work or traveling, I have access to this, this data very easily. Um, I can create a folder. So I'll just show you how we upload.
And drag and drop is, is one of the easier ways to do this. So, so if I have some FASTQ files, you know, I can go and select them. You can see these are, you know, less than a gig, half gig a, a piece. And you can get a feel for how fast, what the transfer speed is. I drag and drop them in. And let's open this back up here just to show you what it's doing. So when you drag files in, it first goes through and compresses them. And so it turns them into 7-zip. So this is all automatic. So I'm just looking back in my demo data folder. And you can see the upload speed. We're already, the first file's almost up. So it, you know, it can easily handle gigs and gigs worth of files and upload them very, very quickly. So super convenient, super fast. So we'll let that we'll let that go up, and now I'm going to go back here to New Cloud Assembly and click Next. And so this is just the regular kind of workflow. Um, we'll wait for that that data to go up. But so we'll pick a whole genome, reference based, and input reference sequences. And so again, if I'm using the cloud, I can upload a reference sequence, or I can add a genome package. So these are these genome packages are already on the cloud. And so I don't have to download. If I was running this locally, I'd have to download these. And they're pretty big. They're a gig or so a piece. And you can see for many of the different model organisms here, we have these genome packages. And for some organisms, it's a combination of the annotated reference chromosomes, as well as DB SNPs. So the most current variant information is bundled in together with them, which makes them really nice. Now, some organisms like E. coli do not have their data in dbSNP, so they're, they're, they're blank there. Um, so we'll do an Arabidopsis uh, data set here. So I'll just select that genome package, just loads it in. And I'm, I'm not going to hit every point here on the assembly setup. We're just going to kind of stick with defaults. And so I'm going to use cloud demo data. And this is going to be Illumina data. Now we do have uh, so so Sharon, who introduced us today, has just recently made some uh, some tutorials for how to use this cloud demo data. So I'm going to kind of show you the cloud demo data. So it's a new button here, and when we click this button, it's just a little bit of data we put up on the cloud. You know, some some folks need to, for example, evaluate. Their, their, they know they're getting Illumina data in the future, and they would like to look at software ahead of time and do some evaluation, so they may not have data ready. So we provided some data sets here for different workflows um, in the cloud demo data. And we have a really nice little clean um, E. coli RNA-seq data set that's got differential gene expression. It's a knockout of a motility gene. That works really well. And then we have these three Arabidopsis genomes. And so I just have to select them. And we've got four salmonellas that we can do de novo or to a reference. We have a cauliflower transcriptome for de novo assembly and a little metagenomic sample of a, a gut microbiome. So it's some nice representative data sets. And so we load them in. Um, this is multi-sample, so I'll make sure that's checked. And I can auto-name them. And the auto-namer will just use mutant one, two, three. So pretty, pretty simple setup. Again, we'll have tutorials for you know, how to use this data. Um, and then we can just set some options here. We have a diploid. I don't want to do copy number variation. So if we go back, um, again, the reference is coming from the cloud, the genome template package. The input data is coming from uh, the cloud demo data folder. And we set our assembly options. Click Next. We have unknown gender there. Let's see. Name our project something. And now when we browse, this will be to the cloud folder. So this is going to save to that same. Um, I can create a new folder or save in my demo data. Here's my webinar data. I usually like to put things in a folder called assemblies. There we go. And so that's where the output will go. And then we just click Next. And we get a little technical here. We show the script of what 
is under the hood. And, and advanced users will, you know, run this program sometimes by script. Um, but what's happening now is we're uploading uh, the data now, um, which is just in this case, just the little script. So the data is already there. We're using cloud data, cloud references. But I just created a little local that script text that you saw on the previous screen. So it's sending that up. And now for a, a few minutes, it will um, move that data to the appropriate Amazon computers. It'll go find available Amazon computers and, and start the job. And so that's not terribly exciting watching that. So we can, we can let that run. And we'll, we'll circle back. It can be variable depending on how it says we've succeeded. Um, I guess we can stick with it. So, so I can see it loaded some data maps and see, you know, there's some technical stuff and some scripts to tell, tell us what's going on. And now we'll click next. And now we get a log then to keep track of some progress. And it'll take just a little bit to populate this. And so now I can see that um, I get some jobs here. I can sort here to say, just show me jobs from that are recent or show all the assemblies. And so here's just what we've gotten in the last seven days from this account. And so I see four different things. I see each um, each mutant assembly is running now on a different, you know, different computer. It's starting up. And this QNG is actually what I mentioned earlier. It's It's another algorithm that will compare these three mutants together and make one so it's really a fourth computer that we're going to use that does all the cross comparing and produces the output that allows me to compare all these all these mutants together. And so this is something that I can I can monitor then. So I can go away now if I want to. And we'll finish that. And I'm just so we'll circle back to that. But so now I'm just looking at uh, those files that uploaded. All says complete. So our cloud data drive just moved up some data, so we're good. So again, extremely fast transfer. So now I could come back at any time. And see, the second time it'll find that license a little quicker, just after a restart there. So now when I'm busy with things, I may have, or testing, I could have 20, 30, 100 assemblies all running at one time. Um, and depending on what we're testing, they might some might be successful and some might not be. Um, so I can go to manage projects to see what, what's going on. You know, and this brings me back in. Um, so I can see things are starting. I see a whole bunch and earlier this month that completed. I see a couple way down here that failed. Um, and so you get some reporting here, and, and of course, if you if you run these assemblies and have um, any any troubles at all, um, that's where we have tech support that can certainly help you. Um, there's a log here as well. Uh, once this once this is going, there's a lo a, a log button um, that I can select and and send that to tech support, and so we can usually help or look at you know see what might be going on with an assembly if you're having any troubles at all. So we can we can monitor these assemblies then. Uh, when they're done, you can see there's some these grayed out buttons: download assembly, view data, and we'll talk we'll talk about that. Um, when I download the assembly, that will give me some of the project files that I need for looking at um, the aligned data or comparing across multiple samples. And so that's just a nice way to monitor. So again, if we do a, a new cloud assembly, I'll go through this quickly. Um, reference based. Okay. I'm clicking on, on the add, so I could also, rather than a genome template package, I may have a reference genome floating around in here. So let's see, I think I have one. So here's some salmonella strains, and I thought I had one. That looks like, yeah, there's a GBK file right there, a Heidelberg strain of salmonella. So this is another way to load. I can upload this GBK file, and... I'm going to add not cloud demo data, but the data I just uploaded. This is some salmonella, where I put in the webinar data. Uh, 
right? And this is multiple sample. Let's try to auto name this. So it's just using the SR. This is from the short read archive. So it's just going to auto group. So this is again paired data. So one and two go together for the different samples. We have a haploid and. So you get the picture here. I can just keep doing this. I've got almost 300 assemblies I can run. And pick my output. We well, can throw them all in that folder together. Just like that. And that's how we do it. And so we can keep you know, running, running jobs. And we'll just do one more thing. I'll show you uh, how we download some of the some of the projects that are up on the cloud as well. So we'll let this we'll let this uh, upload the scripts and data maps. We'll do one more check in, and then I'll take questions after that. Upload succeeded. I can launch another one here. There we go. Next. So now we've got more jobs. So now I can see the jobs here. I have the salmonellas, the fast plants, and all in the starting stage. So you can just keep keep adding assemblies. So um, so again, so now if I want to get some data, so there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, when the assembly is complete, again, we can press these buttons. Uh, but you might not be, you know, you might have closed this down and, and uh, like this. I'll just finish it. I'll show you one other way to come and get the data. So if we go into our DNA Star Laser Gene 15 software, you can see there's the second program down, DNA Star Cloud Data Drive. So we can access that directly. And so without launching the assembler, I can just go in and, and manage my data here and down, download data. So if I have, uh, well, those aren't going to be complete yet, but let's see what I have here. I'll do a, maybe this salmonella strains. And here's my assemblies folder. And I've done this a bunch of times. How about this one? So it, so. Again, the tutorial will help, but I'll just show you a couple ways I can do this. One way, I can just download this whole this whole folder and go local. Sometimes I don't want all that data. You know, I don't really need the assemblies. If I'm just doing a comparison across the strains, I can go in the QNG folder. Now, I didn't see one in there, so let's go up a level here. There's, there's an SQD. There's a... There we go. So in that QNG folder, there's an array star, a .a star file. So in some cases, if, if you've got you know 100 exomes or RNA seqs, huge amounts of assembly data, and you know that'll be many gigs of data, you might decide I can leave that there. All I really need to do is look at the comparison in array star. And so this file is six megabytes. So tiny little file, I can download it. The, the point there is that the erased R file is very small, um, and if you have a multiple sample RNA seq or variant analysis or chip seq, um, that file and analyzing that file can be a quicker way to doing your analysis rather than downloading all those assemblies. So, and with that, um, I'd be more than happy to stick around for the next few minutes and take any any questions that you might have. Thank you, Matt. Uh, this is Sharon, the host again. Um, we have a question that came in from an attendee about cloud security. Um, they need to justify to the lab manager um, whether this is a secure system that they can use um, without worrying about having their you know, data stolen or, or lost or whatever. Um, so I'm going to turn this back over to Matt and for the answer. Uh, yeah, yeah, very good question. Um, all the, so all the data is encrypted. Um, when we upload and download it, and of course it's using Amazon, so that is you know 
cutting edge type um, security. Um, there is some state, so what I would recommend is you can go to our website and under software DNA Star Cloud, there's a state, a couple things. There's a statement here just about uh, how we use the Amazon Web Services, AWS, which is really a, a you know, worldwide standard for, for, for cloud computing. And so there's some, uh, some details here, so you can refer to Amazon's compliance. And we also have a white paper on, cl on cloud security. So I would recommend for anyone that's concerned, or their IT guys is concerned, you know, go here, look at the white paper, and um, that should, you can see that this is really as, as secure as you can, you know, communications are encrypted, yeah, in the, HTTPS TLS protocol, so it's really the, the best that 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 um, is available on the cloud for security. Thanks, Matt. And I also had something that I wanted to bring up for Matt to show you guys, and I'm going to talk him through it and have him show you on on the screen. Um, so first of all, if you open up Seekman Engine, I just wanted to show where the Help button is. So. The help that is delivered along with the uh, installed Seekman Engine application was uh, current as of the 15.3 release last fall. Um, if you if you click on that, it's going to open some pretty decent help, but it's not going to have the new tutorials for the cloud. So you can use that help button um, for for most uh, questions that you have about using Seekman Engine. The help button right there. That'll open the, the 15.3 help that was recent last fall. Since last fall, we have uh, made a new version of the Seekman Engine help that is amazingly easy to use and has embedded videos and everything. I'm going to show you how to get to that. So, Matt, if you can just go back to our website, the dnastar.com. Okay. Okay. And go to uh, training. Help and Tutorials, you'll see Seekman Engine on the right. Just open that up and click on All Training Resources, Seekman Engine. And this is our brand new help. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a Try It Tutorials. Those are for local or cloud assembly users. Keep scrolling down, and you'll see that there's a set of six tutorials that are just for cloud assembly users, including our free trial users. So if you're looking for something to do with your five free uh, cloud trials, um, here are some examples that you can use, uh, lots of different workflows, and all of the data is right there on the cloud um, for you to use. You don't have to upload or download anything. Um, you can just hop right on and uh, start an assembly, and you can even do multiple tutorials and have those running at the same time. Great. Thanks, Sharon. Yes, yeah, the tutorials are... Uh, these are hot off the press, so uh, it's glad to see everything is up here. And as, as Sharon mentioned, um, as a whole, DNA Star has moved to these new type of tutorials that I, I think are great. They allow you to, you know, l work through data, learn about different topics. You know, the videos are in the right context and embedded. So for uh, Seekman Engine, I'll just kind of collapse these down. You can just see it's really a, a nice way to learn you know, how to use the software and to find all the relevant uh, reference materials. So again, with that, uh, thank you. Uh, I don't see any more questions. And uh, if you if you do need to contact us, you know, feel free to, um, you know, request a demo or a quote, or uh, and you'll be in touch, uh, our salesperson will be in touch with you to answer any questions that you have. And with that, uh, have a great day.